I'm Dr. David Schneider. I'm one of the orthopedic surgeons at Panorama Orthopedics and Spine Center, and I'm the director of the Shoulder and Elbow Institute here. I want to talk to you today about rotator cuff tears. The rotator cuff muscles and tendons are the four muscles and tendons around the shoulder joint. If you take the deltoid away and you're looking deep in the shoulder, you'd see these four muscles and tendons inserting on the top of the shoulder, what's the top of the humerus. The muscle in front is the subscapularis, and this is a painting of a right shoulder, and I have a model of a right shoulder. The subscapularis is the front muscle, and when it contracts, it causes internal rotation of the arm. The top muscle is the supraspinatus. That's the muscle that's above the spine of the scapula here on this right shoulder model, and it comes underneath the sacromian bone and inserts onto the tuberosity. The two muscles below the spine are the infraspinatus and the teres minor. And there are these two muscles in the back and they cause external rotation of the shoulder. And those are the muscles that someone would use reaching away from their body or a tennis player would use hitting a backhand if they're right-handed. The most commonly torn tendon in the human body is this top supraspinatus. And here you can see the artist has drawn this red muscle belly and at the end it becomes this white tendon that inserts right onto the top, what's called the greater tuberosity, this big bump right there. That tuberosity also shares the infraspinatus insertion. So these two muscles insert right next to each other and are responsible for, again, lifting the arm overhead. The supraspinatus is the muscle on top that is responsible for raising your arm overhead. So someone injures that when they're reaching away from their body lifting up heavy objects, putting a suitcase overhead in, a, in an airplane. Most people that tear that tendon don't have a dramatic story. They don't have a crash and burn uh, ski slope story. They simply notice that the pain comes on slowly. And once we get into the 60s, 50% of people have a tear of that top tendon. The treatment of these tendons has changed over time. It was only 100 years ago that the first surgical pioneers actually thought they could actually repair this and make someone better. We've noticed over the last decade or so that the treatment of attritional tears, these slow de degenerative tears, has really uh, leaned much more towards non-operative means. So for most patients who are in their 60s or 70s, we're able to treat this without surgery if it slowly comes about. However, if someone has an acute traumatic tear, we're much more inclined to fix that. In fact, we're eager to fix that tendon because we usually have a very small time window to fix an acute tear and be able to reattach it in a really robust fashion. Uh, the treatment of these uh, tears has really changed over the last decade as well. Uh, our ability to sew it down uh, in a really uh, strong way has really dramatically changed. Uh, we know that the type of anchors, the number of anchors, the pattern of the anchors uh, really helps someone heal a lot better. My shoulder partners at Panorama fix almost all rotator cuff tears through the arthroscope. Now some patients have to have open surgery. Uh, that's very rare. Um, we've also noticed that some patients have chronic tears in which the tendon is completely dead. On the top, that supraspinatus is completely pulled away. The infraspinatus is also pulled away. And those patients really only have a couple options. Uh, we're able to treat some of these patients with therapy and make them better with simply medicines and with aggressive therapy. But that doesn't work in a small subset of patients. And in those patients, we're either doing a type of shoulder replacement or a newer procedure where we reconstruct the superior capsule. That operation is called the superior capsule reconstruction and is done in a small number of hospitals around America but uh, we're one of the first centers to do those in America and we've been very pleased with our results. The therapy after shoulder surgery is really, really important. We know that the patients need to work hard at first to get their range of motion back, and then we slowly start to allow them to get back to strengthen their shoulder to be able to use their arm in any way that they want. It's a very long recovery. No matter who does the operation, no matter how well their, their technique is done, it really does take about eight months for most rotator cuff repairs to completely heal. Most patients tell us at four and five months they're feeling really good, but we protect them all the way out until about eight months. We know the older the tear, the bigger the tear, and the older the patient, 
the really the more prolonged the recovery. So you have to be very careful getting back and protecting that repair. At Panorama, we do a lot of revision shoulder surgery. Um, failures happen in any surgeon's hands, uh, but we try and use the most advanced techniques, the most advanced anchors, the most advanced rehab to get people back to be as strong as they can be to get back and lead the life that they want to lead.